This is Don Gossett. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Welcome to Bull Bible Missions and your radio teacher, Don Gossett, a worldwide ministry with all of its outreaches made possible by you. Don is sharing from his book, The Power of Your Words, co-authored by Don and Dr. E.W. Kenyon. And now sharing with you God's word to achieving a faith-building and victorious life, here is radio teacher, friend, and world evangelist, Don Gossett. Well, thank you, Mike. I'm sharing with you an exciting truth that you can learn to say who God says you are. You can learn to say what God says you have. And you can learn to say what God says you can do. Three awesome facts I want to emphasize. I have shared with you already about the healing of my daughter, Jeannie, when she was stricken with club feet and deformed hands and a respiratory condition and was restored completely whole. And the doctor who had been her caregiver all that time. He was simply amazed at what had happened. He said to me, Jeannie was not well, Don, when she was born, and there wasn't a lot of hope for her survival, but now she's completely well. Both her feet are perfectly normal. Her respiration is fine. All I can say is I'm glad it happened. Well, I'm so glad it happened for my daughter Jeannie there years ago when she was just a baby. And then this challenge of my wife having rheumatic fever. As I pondered these truths to my heart, I realized I had been victimized by words out of harmony with God's word. I would speak such phrases I can't. And I would say, I'm afraid. Yet God's word told me I can. And God's word declares, fear not. So my words were out of harmony with God's word. I was disagreeing with the Lord. And then came another big scripture to me, Amos 3.3, 3, where God asked the question, Can two walk together except they be agreed? I discovered I could never walk with God in blessing, triumph, and abundant supply as long as I disagreed with God. So here was the key. I had to agree with what the Lord said. I had to say what God said about my life. And I learned to say what he said about my health, my finances, my strength, my anointing, my empowering, all of these blessings God had promised in his word. Now, as the Holy Spirit was reproving me, he also led me to write down at that time for my own admonition what I was to label my never again list. And thank God this truth not only changed my life, but he enabled me to share it with literally millions of people in many languages. And thank God the truth of it has prevailed. I really praise God this truth if what you believe you're saying, then what you say is what you'll get. If you say, I can't pay my bills, for instance, you won't be able to pay your bills, even though God's word says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But if you change your negative way of speaking and thinking based on God's promise to supply, you'll receive his financial miracles you need. Now, this is entirely what I want to say to you to share with you how you can get what you say. Before I explain how to get what you say, I want to get in one word of warning here. Since what you say is what you get, don't ever say anything you wouldn't want to get. Let me repeat that statement. Since what you say is what you get, according to Mark 11, 23, don't ever say anything you wouldn't want to get. And to help you overcome this habit of negative speaking, negative speaking, that has been a dominating force in your life, I'd like for you to start where I started in an overcoming faith-built life. And when I wrote down 12 affirmations that were absolutely to change my life forevermore, I wrote, wrote down, Never again will I confess I can't, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Never again will I confess lack, for my God shall supply all my need. Never again will I confess fear, for God has not given me the spirit of fear. Never again will I confess doubt and lack of faith, for God has given to every man the measure of faith. And never again will I confess weakness, for the Lord is the strength of my life. And the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. 
and never again will I confess the primacy of Satan over my life, for greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. Never again will I confess defeat, for God always caused me to triumph in Christ Jesus. Never again will I confess lack of wisdom, for Christ Jesus is made unto me wisdom from God. And never again will I confess sickness, for with his stripes I'm healed. And Jesus himself took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses. Never again will I confess worries and frustrations, for I am casting all my cares upon him who cares for me. In Christ, thank God, I am carefree. And never again will I confess bondage, for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And never again will I confess condemnation, for there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. By his grace I am in Christ, therefore I am free from condemnation. How about that? Well, praise God, these are 12 principles that changed my life to enable me to cease being an eye canter and afflicted with that eye cantitis disease, to overcome and prevail that uh, the word of God shall have domination in my life. For it's through Christ we can do all these things. And the matter of financial inability and lack that had been a master of my life for years, I was able to rise up and agree with God emphatically and God who watches over his word to perform it ministers and ministered again to financial needs and the torments of fear that had often visited me, the fear of man, the fear of failure, the fear of an untimely death, the fear of a cancer, the fear of some other critical ailment or the fear of uh, my children going astray and all these things were such a part of my life for years. But then I spoke these truths that never again will I confess fear. For my God has never once given me the spirit of fear, but he's given me the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And these how these truths prevail. When I knew that I was a faith man, and my friend, you are either a faith man or a faith woman. You're not a doubter. You're a part of the household of faith. And you can rise up and declare it, that the Lord is the strength of my life, that the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Well, let me tell you about a lady named Mabel. Mabel Marvin attended one of my services and shared with me a good example of the results that had come from taking God at his word. Mabel and her husband had triumphed over a very bad situation just by refusing to give way to negative words and by declaring out loud their confidence in God's provision. Well, I have a pretty good idea that Satan was more than ordinarily busy that day. This story started because it was a Sunday at a time when people were on their way home from church. And Mabel was aware that she had heard the word of the Lord that day. And so the enemy, the adversary, had been aware he would have to work harder than on other days to counteract what God's people had been receiving in the church ministry. And I can well imagine that Satan was probably watching Mabel's situation gleefully. But he didn't reckon with Mabel. He knew the power of the spoken word, or Mabel did. And thank God when she used it according to God's principles. Here's what Mabel shared with me in that day. She said, you know, Don, the sermon was on that January morning had been speaking out in positive words when there's trouble, when everything goes wrong. Our ministry had told us that day that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So we knew that God himself could overcome the worst circumstances we had and enable us to rise up to be an overcomer. And she said, on our way home that day from church, everything seemed to go wrong. Our old truck, our only means of transportation and the means by which we earned our living, Delivering milk broke down again, and the gears had been fixed less than a month before. We were desperate, and those were days of war time rationing. And it's beyond fixing. This time, my husband Henry said to me, he said, Mabel, I don't know what we're going to do. So many are ahead of me on the priority list that the car dealer told me it might be two years for I could get a new truck, but we need a truck now. How will we get to church? How will we feed our, uh, get feed for our cows? how we deliver our milk to, or get our groceries, 
Henry said, I'm just sick about all of this. Well, um, Marv, uh, Melba reminded him, Henry, with God all things are possible. We've prayed a long time. Now it's time to praise the Lord for a new truck. Let's put the word of God into practice today. Well, thank God Henry was rather than joyful about, joyful about that idea. He says, Mabel, suppose we do and we still don't get a new truck. Well, Mabel continued her confidence that God would be her provider for her and her husband. And she said, I'm going to keep, keep on worshiping the Lord until there becomes a full manifestation. Mabel described it as two miles over two hills, bitter cold day. But every step of the way, Mabel praised the Lord for a brand new truck. And the next day she continued to praise the Lord. She said, I was on my knees praising the Lord when Henry called to tell me he had a new Dodge truck. Mr. Johnson, the man with whom he had ridden into town after our truck had broken down, had stopped at the Dodge Agency on an errand. A truck had arrived that afternoon, but the man who had ordered it refused it because the wheelbase was too short for him. And Mr. Johnson mentioned our need to the dealer, and thank God Henry had a new Dodge truck. Well, Mabel was a living example of what you say is what you get. She spoke that she would have a new truck, that God would be their provider, and even though everything seemed to be against the concept, God ministered and confirmed his word, and they had the new truck for their living and their uh, well-being. And my friend, whatever you're facing today, whatever, whatever unmet needs are in your life, if you need healing or you need financial provision or you need other factors, come on, let's speak God's word. And rejoice in him in Jesus' name. Receive it today. And now join me as you and I together rejoice in this wonderful Lord. Christ Jesus is the object of our adoration. He's our Savior. Will you join me as we praise him together? Praise the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. From the radio library of Bold Bible Living with Don Gossett, Biblical Principles to a Dynamic Spiritual Life, as timely today as they were yesterday, and will continue to be so tomorrow. God's purposes do not change. God's ways do not change. Your prayers and love gift to Bold Bible Missions is your way to partner with us in winning the lost for Christ. So please write today. Send your letter of support to Bold Bible Missions in Canada, Box 75120, White Rock, British Columbia, 4VAOB1, or Box 2, Blaine, Washington, 98231. Bold Bible, a worldwide ministry, is only made possible by you. Please send your prayer request, your praise reports, and letters of support, Box 2, Blaine, Washington, 98231. Or in Canada, Box 75120, White Rock, British Columbia, V4A, OB1. And thank you from all of us here at Bold Bible Missions.